Welcome outside the LSU locker room after the Tigers' an exciting 36-16 victory. Jacob Hester, Gordy Rush, and uh, I'm going to ask you first, Jacob. Uh, LSU ran the football and they stopped the run. I mean, that, that was the concern going in was could LSU stop Georgia's rushing attack, which is averaging over 200 yards a game, and, they, and it was a big yes. LSU did an amazing job. Clyde Edwards, E. Lair, Joe Burrow, Nick Brosette, all of them ran the ball effectively, and you, you're right. They stopped Holyfield. He had one drive where they kind of pushed the defensive line around. Once they settled in, though, in this game, they stopped the rushing attack of Georgia. That was truly impressive. They've made Jake Fromm look as bad as I've seen him look. You know, LSU's won some big games against top five teams over the course of this program. I don't know that they've ever been as dominant winning a game, Gordy. Yeah, I, I thought both sides of the football was fantastic. And, and when LSU looked last week like they got pushed around a little bit in the swamp, that was not the case tonight in Tiger Stadium. I thought Steve Ensminger called well the football game. When you look at these numbers, 81 plays, 475 yards. But when you go past it, uh, I don't know. They must have scouted Georgia in person because Georgia struggled with tempo. And Steve preached before the game at halftime, we're going to go fast, we're going to go fast. LSU's at the line of scrimmage. Georgia couldn't get lined up. Georgia, uh, it took all the complexity out of it. They have to go simple, vanilla with their calls, and they couldn't substitute. I thought it was brilliant the way they, they called the game and, and hit a couple shots early, loosened them up, and, and Georgia, uh, you know, especially the, the busted coverage was one that jumped out to me in the first half on Jefferson. And after that, Georgia went really vanilla just because they wanted to get lined up. Cole Tracy, you know, going into the season, I don't know that we talked about the kicking game all that much. Cole Tracy, maybe the offensive MVP this season. Look, when he got that scholarship, there was a lot of naysayers. Why are you giving a scholarship to a Division II kicker? He has been the best kicker in the country. Every time he trots out there, you expect it to be a make. You don't even watch the field goal anymore because it's going to go through the uprights. He is a weapon. He gets you points when you have to have points. When you're in the red zone and you can't score that touchdown, you know you're going to come away with three points. What a difference a year makes in the kicking game. And, and you know, in the first half, you know, the Tigers, of course, LSU fans wanted to see more touchdowns, but they just kept tacking on points after points even coming out of the locker room uh, three every time down the field. Yeah, and in a game like this, when you have two traditionally good defenses, points are at a premium. So I, I like the, you'd like to see them converted. But, yeah, you got to get some points down there. But it, it, was, it was the physicality of it, Ronnie. You know, the fact that the third downs, the fourth downs, four or four on fourth downs, slowly but surely throughout the game, LSU was wearing Georgia down. LSU, uh, four of four on fourth downs, like you mentioned, six of 19 on third downs. You know something about fourth downs. This seems like big games, LSU, fourth downs. You got to get them, right? Yeah, I don't know what the record is, but I think <laughs> Joe Burrow's got the record now for fourth down conversions. Look, they had a game plan, like Gordy mentioned, to get on the ball fast, go tempo, not let Georgia get set up. They had a good game plan for the running back to get the old Bush push. We used to say USC, Notre Dame. It was a great game plan. Credit to Joe Burrow. That's not easy to do to pick up those first downs. Gordy, uh, defensively, you know, this LSU defense heard it all week. You know, they, 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 they had a lead in the fourth quarter at the Swamp, let the Florida Gators behind a so-so offense go right down the field and, and win the game. This week, the defense stepped up. I thought they played well. Uh, I was a little puzzled, quite frankly, with Georgia's play calling. I mean, when you see that uh, Elijah Holyfield was seven, only had seven touches, he had eight yards every time he touched the game, and why did Georgia abandon the running game as early as they did? But, hey, that's thank you, Georgia. Georgia from LSU standpoint I, I thought uh, th they did such a wonderful job on the perimeter and when you get behind against this LSU team and you have to throw the football they have so many athletes so many different looks and uh, the, the secondary real stepped up played a whale of a ball game turnovers uh, LSU able to get the football fumbles interceptions that's what this defense we thought was going to look like this year I mean you could tell the defense was hungry to get the turnovers get back in that plus territory where they've been all season long special teams that turnover was huge right I don't know if George Georgia had the ball in the pile to start with, but there was no way that returner was getting out of that pile with that football. They were aggressive, man, all night. Fourth down conversions, the defense getting the ball, especially teams getting the ball, they were aggressive. That's going to be the key word for this game. First time LSU fans rushed the field since 2014 against Ole Miss. Really, I didn't have that stat. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to trust yeah, you on that yeah. one. You know, uh, Trey Quinn, they carried him off yeah, the field. Yeah. Remember that? They surfed him. Yeah. I, I will tell you, Ronnie, great win. But, you know, hey, we, we, don't, we can do more than the 24-hour rule. <laughs> but this team really has to because next week State comes in here. And I'll tell you what, State's going to run the ball between the tackles. They're not going to throw the football. That's the thing about this conference. Uh, each week is going to be a battle. State was open this week. And so that will be a big game 6 o'clock next week. If LSU can beat Mississippi State, it will set up a game of the century too, right? 
I mean, that's LSU what we'll do, of course. You got to yeah. sell tickets. <laughs> All right, Gordy Rush, Jacob Hester, and a victorious, loud LSU locker room. Let's go back to the studio.